So great to have the choir back. That's, uh, that's wonderful. And uh, they just sang us a song about a journey, about walking the Christian life. And that is a, a metaphor that Christians have used for so long to describe what the Christian life is like, to describe what it is like to journey through life following Jesus and knowing Jesus. We use that, that metaphor of a journey or even of an adventure. And I think that is uh, the perfect metaphor for us this morning because we are at a point in the life of our church where we are thinking about how we engage with our neighborhood, how we engage with our world, and what God is calling us to in a new way. We've been talking for a long time about this mission statement that we have, and we've been saying that it's not a mission statement that we want to just leave on the shelf. Uh, We start our worship services uh, many times just saying our mission statement, that we feel that God is calling us to grow active followers of Jesus Christ and build his community. Now, I hope that at least some of us are close, at least, to the point that we're sick of hearing that, that we hear it so much, because if a few of us are, then that means that uh, some people are only just hearing it. Uh, But that mission statement really is an adventure for us. Because it's not something that we want to just say, it's something that we want to do. It's something that we want to enter into the journey of seeing that mission statement come to fruition. Of joining God in what he is doing on this journey that we are on together as as a church, as as a community, as a fellowship, journeying that together. So today we're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about how God is leading us as a church on this mission together, but we're going to do something very different. Every Sunday, and this is a a definite Presbyterian pattern, we take a a sermon, we take a a, a section of text, uh, just usually a small section, and we exegete that text, and we, we preach about that text, and we dig into it, but today what we're going to do is we're going to step back And we're going to look at an overview of Scripture. We're going to talk about five whole chapters in the Gospel of Luke. And then starting next week, we have a new sermon series beginning that's going to go through those five chapters of Luke and show this journey that Jesus is on, this adventure that he is on. And so we're going to do that. So a little different today. And uh, and as we do that together, we are going to look at that, at that adventurous journey that God calls us to, calls Jesus to, calls our church to, and calls each of us as individuals to as well. But before we do that, let's pray together one more time. Oh God, we do give you thanks for the journey you call us to, for the way in which we live our lives following you, and the way in which you call us to an adventure in that way. We pray that as we think about these five chapters of Luke, as we listen to your spirit and look at the overarching journey of those five chapters, that you would speak to us, that you would open our hearts and minds, that what we see in the life and ministry of Jesus in those chapters would call us to a new adventure this morning. We pray this in your son's holy name. Amen. I, uh, I've always liked at least the idea of adventures. One of the reasons I like backpacking so much or have liked backpacking so much is that I uh, love the idea of just going into the wilderness and going to new places and turning a corner and seeing a view I've never seen before. And there's also, you know, if you're careful, there's not a lot of risk involved, but there's a little bit of risk and that's kind of exciting too. Now, the entire journey isn't always fun, but I love the idea of going on a journey and having an adventure. Uh, But I also guess that I understand that not everybody likes adventures. Once when I was out backpacking, I was stuck in a tent for like a day and a half because the weather was so bad, lightning storms, and I had nothing to do. And so I started reading the book that I had brought. You bring one book back in those days. It was before Kindles. You could bring a whole library now, but I just had one book. And that book was The Lord of the Rings. And so I sat in the tent reading The Lord of the Rings, and I just fell in love with this book. And that was the point. I was an adult by then, but that was when I became kind of a fantasy novel geek. And I'm kind of a nerd about a lot of other things. I know that doesn't surprise you. But 
but now I'm like this fantasy novel geek, and it was because of that moment reading The Lord of the Rings, because I was on this adventure in the wilderness, and then I'm reading The Lord of the Rings, which many of you know, maybe some of you don't, but that book is about a journey. It's about an adventure. And some people love that book, and some people don't. In fact, I remember a sitcom not too long ago where they were all making fun of a character in the sitcom because that character liked the Lord of the Rings so much. And so someone who was teasing that person stood up and just started walking across the room and saying, I'm the Lord of the Rings. I'm walking across the mountains. I'm walking across the plains. I'm walking across the, the forest because that's all that book is about. It's just like one journey. We're walking here or another journey. We're walking there. But I love that book because it's an adventure. They form this fellowship and they go on this journey and they're trying to save people in the world because this great evil has come. It's it's exciting. It's, It's thrilling. But even Tolkien, who wrote that book, knew that not everybody likes adventures. In fact, in the sequel to, or the the prequel really, to The Lord of the Rings, a little book called The Hobbit, I, I know many of you know that too, there's a moment in that book when this old wizard Gandalf comes to a little village full of people called hobbits. And these hobbits are simple people and they like relaxing and enjoying themselves. And Gandalf, this old man wizard, comes into this village to invite people into an adventure. And he ends up talking to one particular hobbit named Bilbo. And I'm going to read you just a a couple paragraphs here. Now you got to get in the mode because when was the last time someone read a book to you? Might have been a while. But it's good, so got to get in that mode. You're listening, picture the old wizard Gandalf talking to Bilbo, inviting him on an adventure, and this is how it goes. Good morning, said Bilbo, and he meant it. The sun was shining and the grass was very green, but Gandalf looked at him from under long bushy eyebrows that stuck out further than the brim of his shady hat. What do you mean, the wizard said. Do you wish me a good morning, or mean that it is a good morning whether I want it or not, or that you feel good this morning, or that it is a morning to be good on? All of them at once, said Bilbo, and a very fine morning for a pipe of tobacco out of doors into the bargain. If you have a pipe about you, sit down and have a fill of mine. There's no hurry. We have all the day before us. Then Bilbo sat down on a seat by his door, crossed his legs, and blew out a beautiful gray ring of smoke that sailed up into the air without breaking and floated away over the hill. Very pretty, said Gandalf. But I have no time to blow smoke rings this morning. I am looking for someone to share in an adventure that I am arranging, and it is very difficult to find anyone. I should think so in these parts, said Bilbo. We are a plain, quiet folk, and have no use for adventures. Nasty, disturbing, uncomfortable things. They make you late for dinner. I can't see what anyone sees in them, said our Mr. Baggins, and stuck one thumb behind his braces and blew out another even bigger smoke ring. Then he took out his morning letters and began to read, pretending to take no more notice of the old man. He had decided that he was not quite his sort, and he wanted him to go away. But the old man did not move. He stood leaning on his stick and gazing at the hobbit without saying anything till Bilbo got quite uncomfortable and even a little cross. Good morning, he said at last. We don't want any adventures here. Thank you. You might try over the hill or across the water. And by this, he meant that the conversation was at an end. Sorry, he continued. I don't want any adventures. Thank you. Not today. Good morning. Goodbye. The hobbit turned and scuttled inside his round green door and shut it as quickly as he dared not to seem rude. So not everybody likes adventures. I get that. They are uncomfortable things. They do interrupt our lives. They make you late for dinner, like Bilbo says. But there was a time when churches knew that we were on an adventure together. And there have also been seasons in the life and history of the church all over the world when maybe churches have not been so into the adventure that God calls us to. 
you remember when we, uh, last year, we had a sermon series on the, the book of Acts. It was called the Inside Out Gospel. And it was absolutely clear to us as we went through the book of Acts that the church in the book of Acts was on this adventure. But we also know as we look back, maybe even in recent history, in churches maybe we were involved on it in, as I look back over the last 30 years of ministry or so, I, I remember moments in that in church time when instead of feeling like we were on this journey of mission, instead of feeling like we were entering into this adventure that God is calling us to, we felt more like we were just maintaining, that we were just trying to draw a crowd. We felt that, gosh, if we have this place to meet for worship and we draw a big crowd, then, then we're doing it. That's all we have to do. But that is not the adventure we see in the uh, the book of Acts, and it's certainly not the adventure that we see Jesus begin in Luke chapters 5 to 10. Used to be that churches felt like maybe at a certain point, when I look back anyway, that we felt like the journey was this. Yeah, we knew we had this goal of making disciples. That's the, the goal. But the journey to do that might have looked something like this. Like maybe we build a building then we draw a crowd, and then we hope that disciples will be made. And maybe that worked at certain points in church life and church history. Or then a little bit later on, some more recently in church history, we felt like, okay, we know our, our mission, in, in our case, our mission is to grow active followers, to build his community. That's the destination. What does the journey look like? Well, what we do is we, we make a committee, very Presbyterian approach, and then that committee runs a program, and then that program produces disciples. Is that the adventurous journey that God is calling us to? It's not, because we see a very different journey in, the, in, in, in Luke chapters 5 to 10. Because Jesus does what we know God is calling us to, to do. Jesus begins a ministry in Luke chapter 5. Now, we heard a moment ago, Bob read to us Luke chapter 4. That's the beginning of this journey. And already by this point, Jesus has healed people in Luke chapter 4. He has started teaching. He's drawing a crowd around him. And this crowd follows him wherever he goes. And he's trying to get some alone time. But this crowd comes. And Jesus is not super excited about crowds at all times. But he is sometimes. But in this moment, they draw around him. And He's been with them, and, and they want more from Jesus. But he says to them, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to the other cities also. That's what he says. He says, you know, it's great you're here, but I've got to go. I've got a journey. I've got an adventure that God is calling me to. And then in chapter 5, that journey, that adventure begins. And it doesn't look like build a building, draw a crowd, make disciples. It doesn't look like have a committee, run a program, make disciples. It looks like this. It's a journey of Jesus connecting in relationship with people and then people growing closer to Jesus, knowing him more, and then people just lavishing love on one another and on the world around them. It's a journey of connecting growing, and loving. And as we've been asking that, the question around here as leaders, we've been saying, okay, we know our mission is to grow active followers, to build the community of Jesus. We know that's our mission. How do we do it? We've been listening to people. We've been hearing testimonies about people who've experienced that here at Hamblin Church. They've, they've become a follower of Jesus, or they've grown closer to Jesus, or they've become active by loving others, or they've become part of the community. And we hear these stories, and we know God is at work in in the lives of people in that way by connecting in relationship, growing closer to Jesus and loving others. That's an exciting adventure. That's a thrilling adventure to be called on. It's a journey and we believe that's the journey that we all get to be a part of it so that we can see God do his work and grow active followers and build his community, connecting, growing, and loving. So let's step back one more time. We, we see that in it at Hamblin, we see that process, 
And we think if we join God in that process even more, we'll see it happen even more because we think that's what God's calling us to. But we also see that process in Luke chapters 5 to 10. So let's think a little bit. If, if you know the Bible well, you'll, this will sound very familiar to you. If you don't, some of this will be a, an exciting journey to hear about. Not unlike the journey in the Lord of the Rings where a fellowship gathers and they go on this journey to save the world. Well, Jesus begins that in chapter 5 of Luke. The first thing he does is he goes out from saying, he's saying, I got to go. And he goes right out and he meets Peter, James, and John. He starts this small group. He connects with them, and he calls them into ministry with him. They're out fishing, and he goes and joins them and and draws them to him. And then they go, and then Jesus heals a leper. I'm skipping around a bit. We're not going to talk about every single thing in those five chapters right now. But as as he goes through that, he meets a a leper who's an outcast in society, and and he heals him. He connects with him. And then there's this small group of people who connect with a man who's paralyzed. And this man wants to get to Jesus. And this small group of people come together and they connect in relationship with this man. They pick him up and they carry him to Jesus, literally. And that's how that man is not only healed, but it's how that man's sins are forgiven. Because of that connection and that small group that brought him to Jesus. And then Jesus goes and he meets a guy named Levi, or we also call him Matthew. And 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 Matthew is a tax collector, which at that point in history, in that cultural context, a tax collector was basically a collaborator with the enemy. And Jesus connects in relationship with him, loves him. And then Matthew invites him over to his house, and they have a big party at his house, and there's more connection that takes place. As he's making these connections, Jesus starts developing some enemies, religious and political enemies, and eventually they form a plot to kill him. So we've got this adventure living out as he's, he's, he's making these connections, and then enemies develop. This sounds a lot like Lord of the Rings, demons and miracles and, and, and enemies, but, but this is not fantasy. This is real. This is in the Gospel of Luke. And it continues on throughout these five chapters, all these relational connections Jesus makes in his small group of disciples, in a larger crowd of disciples, and he goes out. He's not just building community, building relationships with the people he knows. He's out building brand new relationships in the world around him. That's the connection we see. And then we also see this journey continue as people grow closer to Jesus. Jesus says he's the bridegroom at one point, He makes everything that's happening about him. He he teaches that he is the way to God. That you you don't fast when the bridegroom is with you, he says. You celebrate with joy, and he's talking about himself. And he's saying, grow closer to me. That's what Jesus wants, that we would know him, and in doing so, know God. Jesus talks about the fact that he is better than religious rules. He's better than Sabbath keeping. And he doesn't just heal people, but he forgives their sins. Then people form in these relationships, and and as they're growing closer to Jesus, and and they they, uh, uh, follow Jesus around and his disciples, and they provide for him out of their resources so that the ministry can continue. And then Jesus preaches this sermon. It's not the Sermon on the Mount. It's the Sermon on the Plain. And Jesus talks about what it means to live this life, this adventurous life of following him and, and loving him. And he, he teaches people what that's, what that's like to, to grow and to live in the way that he does. We even get a parable about growth, about a sower who sows some seed, and that seed is It's like the word of God and it helps us grow and and we even get that metaphor of a plant growing and becoming closer and closer to Jesus because of God's word. And then the journey continues. We've had connecting, we've had growing and the journey continues into love. As his disciples engage with the world around them, as Jesus reaches out to people, as Jesus goes to the other cities, not just an 
in, in, in an inward thing, but an outward thing as he just shares love. And you see this beautiful diversity of love in Luke chapters 5 to 10, where he is loving people that are not just like himself, but he is loving people like, like uh, Pharisees who were these judgmental religious leaders. And he's loving people like, like tax collectors who, as I said a moment ago, were essentially enemy collaborators. And he's loving people like prostitutes and lepers and and the unclean, and people from all walks of life, people who are just teachers, or people who are, 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 are in the military, a variety of people, tremendous diversity, and he loves them all, and he's healing many of them, and he even raises people from the dead, he cares so much. And then a woman comes, and she pours perfume on his feet, and she's loving him, and he tells this story about the fact that when your sins are forgiven, and when you have a lot of sins forgiven, that generates a lot of love in you. And you see this love grow in all the followers of Jesus as they engage with people around them. At one point, his mother and his brothers come, and, and he sa- the people come to him and he say, hey, hey, your mother and your brothers are here. And, and Jesus says, you know who are my, who's my mother and my brothers? It's you guys. It's the ones who hear the word of God and, and follow. That's love. And that's this journey that we see connecting, growing, and loving. It's this pattern. And that's us. That's what God's calling us to, to be on that ministry journey just like Jesus is. We don't just exist. We're not just a building. We're not just trying to maintain. We don't have that model anymore of of drawing a crowd and and expecting results or, or being organized and expecting results. We have to connect in authentic relationships with one another. We grow closer to Jesus and we love the world around us and we love each other. And there is no better way to live, no more adventurous way to live than, than that. Jesus knew what he was doing. And so we join in that journey too. We think about our mission statement for a moment, growing active followers of Jesus Christ, building his community. It's kind of three important concepts in that mission statement. One is the connecting in relationship because we're talking about growing community. Another is being active, being an active follower of Jesus. And that means loving. And the other one is, is growing as followers of Jesus, that we grow closer to Jesus. Those elements of connecting, growing, and loving are in that mission statement. But what's more important is that we are hearing about God using that journey in not just the life of our church, but using that journey beyond us and even using that journey in individual hearts right here. And so we want to talk about, I want to talk about that for just just a second, because we do want to begin that adventure in a new way. We want to take some, st- some tangible steps and, 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 and see God at work even more. Follow him the way that he's calling us. Uh, David, if you want to put up the, the slide, we have this kind of little diagram. And uh, you can see that it's not a linear process. It's not a linear journey to connect in relationship, to grow closer to Jesus, to love others, but it's also not a philosophical process. It's a real, actual journey, and it's not complicated. We want to keep this simple. When we're talking about connecting, we're just talking about making friends. Friends among ourselves, and especially friends in our neighborhoods, in the world around us. Making those connections the way that Jesus Christ did. And when we talk about growing closer to Jesus, we're talking about learning more about Jesus, knowing him, experiencing him more in things like worship right now, in ways like like giving. That's a way to grow closer to Jesus Christ. In things like like Bible study and Bible engagement, maybe in in a group or in a class. And when we talk about loving, we're talking about sharing Jesus Christ with others or meeting needs or doing charity or, or engaging uh, in something beyond charity. 
We've got a group talking about that. You might have been here a couple weeks ago when we heard about one of the groups in the church that's really concerned with um, not just giving charity, but actually changing systems so that people can thrive. That's love, loving others. It's a beautiful journey. This journey, though, it's not a, a to-do list. This isn't a checklist. I think this is actually a pretty good model of what life in Christ looks like, though. It's a dynamic, thrilling journey that we have to live the way that Jesus is calling us to. And God uses this in each of our hearts and minds. And you might be at one point or another. Like I said, it's not a checklist. You don't, we don't have to do all three at any given time or any of that. But you might look at this and say, gosh, you know, this, there's an area that God is really calling me to engage right now. Maybe it's an area you haven't engaged in before or it's an area you know that you'd, you'd like to engage in more because God's tugging at your heart in a, a certain way. But you don't have to do it all and we don't, aren't trying to say that you have to do it all. But we are starting to align our ministries and our mission with this idea that we're on a journey together that we're not just existing, that, that just sitting in a, in a sanctuary doesn't make us Christian. Any more, you've heard this expression, any more than sitting in a garage makes you a car, right? We're on a journey together. So look at this slide for just a moment and think, what's your journey look like? Many of you have held, said, said testimonies, you've talked about being part of this church and building a friendship or a connection with a group or discovering community like you haven't had before and how that began a journey of growing closer to Jesus and releasing you for ministry to love others. That's a story we hear again and again. And so look at that diagram and think about Luke 5 to 10 as Jesus lives this out and ask yourself, how is God doing this in your life? How are you connecting? How are you growing? How are you loving? I also want to say before we end today that we are taking some tangible steps. We want to follow God. We're serious about this. So just in the, over the summer and as we've talked more with leaders, we've done some pretty significant things and we want to see even more happen. We've done what we call staff alignment. The staff has come together, talked about this ministry process we see God revealing and, 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 and have aligned our gifts and our, our ministries to that process even more. We hope that in the future, if you're on a committee or a team, that you'll talk about this too and that there will be some alignment that takes place there too. Betsy talked about this experience that we're designing called Connect, Grow, Love. It's just a, a four-week time to come together and to think about and be intentional about how God is calling you to this adventurous journey. We hope you'll be a part of that. When we talk about connecting with people, we think that primarily happens in communities. Some of those communities are small groups, some of those communities are large groups, and we want to put more energy and resources into that. And so you're going to be hearing more about that in the future, about how to make some of those connections, not just inside the church, but outside. We want to make our ministry partners more accessible. You know, we have all these partners in Spokane from Family Promise to Bite to Go to, to the school across the street and even just our, our neighborhood. We have all these ways to engage and to show our love for others. And we want to make those connections easier for, for you and for all of us to engage in. We're going to start a sermon series next week because we, as we look at this, we think, you know what, we, we're, as a church, we have some strengths and some weaknesses, and we feel like we're pretty good at growing and loving. We want to do more of that, but one of our weaknesses, we think, might be connecting. That's what we've been talking about, and so we're going to look over the course of, of this next sermon series about how we can actually do that, how we can connect with people in a way that changes our lives that tr is transforming. I'm really looking forward to that. And then after this service, as you heard Janet Ray talking about this, we've got this ministry fair. Go into that ministry fair. You're going to see all these tables. There's so much going on in the life of the church. But as you're walking around and looking at these ministries, think about this journey that we're on and saying, how, how can I connect with people through that ministry? Or how can I grow closer to Jesus Christ through that ministry? Or how can I love others through that ministry? Ask yourself like that. 
I hope that you'll be part of trying some new things, of joining us on this new journey together. Let's get ready to go on an adventure together. Maybe adventure isn't for everybody, but let's, let's jump in anyway. Let's not be like Bilbo and we walk back up to our little round door and shut it as fast as we can without seeming rude. Instead, let's be like the people in Luke 5 to 10 who Jesus calls and they follow him and they go on this absolutely adventurous journey with him. I want to invite you into that. And I cannot wait to see what God has in store for us in the coming season. Amen.